Yo, what's good, YouTube man? It's Gary from Channel Fan TV, man. Back at you on the video and the content of this video. Go smash that like button and the content of this channel. Go ahead and subscribe, man. Look, all right. So, after thinking about the game from Sunday, uh, watching it back again, I, I mentioned them in the post game recap, but we got to talk about them again. I think Patrick Queen really deserves our attention once more, right? Think about Patrick Queen coming into this season, right? The Ravens declined his fifth year option. He deleted some things off of his social media regarding the Ravens. It looks like it could be going to a very, very bad place, a very, very bad situation, right? I remember listening to Patrick Queen on the um, the Ravens Lounge podcast a couple weeks ago, right? That, you know, Gary Down and, and uh, Ryan Mink do, right? To interview the players, right? And he said, yeah, you know, that put, that put him in a, bad, in a bad place, right? But he said he didn't want to come to the building with any negative attitude, any negative thoughts. I think he was like the good guy, which means like, he got a good guy award, I should say, which means like he's really good with the media um, and always open and honest, things like that, right? So he said he didn't want to let anything that was going on with him with the contract affect his play on the field. And through two games so far this year, we are seeing that. We are seeing a Patrick Queen that was very, very good last year, but now this year he's playing at an elite level, right? So through two games right now, we got Patrick Queen, right? 19 total tackles. Um, on pace for a career high in tackles, right? We're talking about 150 plus tackles this year. That's, that's what he's on pace for. All right, one sack, one pass deflection, uh, one TFL, two quarterback hits in two games, okay? So not only is he putting it all on the stat sheet, you can see the progression as a player out there on the field. Patrick Queen before, right, he used to look kind of timid out there. Like he was always kind of, Thinking instead of playing. Now he's full speed flying around the field. And this Bengals game was a 100% notice of what he is as a player, right? Every, ting, every single snap on defense, like I said, he's only credited for eight tackles versus the Bengals. But if you watch the game again, he is all over the field making multiple plays. Now, might, might not be making the tackle, but he's always in the area involved in what's going on positively on defense, right? So you got that part of it, right? Now you got the part of he could be on the field whether it's, whether it's early downs or third downs, right? I looked up his snap percentages from, you know, early in his career, right? Rookie year was like 76. Um, last, no, not last year. Two years ago, 2021, it was like 80%. It, it, it take him off the field probably, you know, third down pass situations, right? Last year and this year, uh, last year I think it was around like 94%, something like that. This year, he's on the field 99% of the snaps. I think the only snap he probably missed was the one where he got slightly injured last week versus the Bengals and he missed maybe like a, a play or two. So now this is a guy that the Ravens have to protect and take him off the field because he would get lost in pass coverage to a guy that is a true three down linebacker, right? And this is a true progression for Patrick Queen. There was concerns about would he ever get to this point of being a three down linebacker and he's here now, right? I've said this many times before, a lot of people credit this Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith helped Patrick Queen reach another level for sure. But last year, early on in the season, Patrick Quinn took this leap before Roquan Smith even arrived here. Now he's only taking his game to another level, right? Him and Patrick Queen, uh, Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, are both, I think, top 15, top 20 in tackles right now in the NFL. Um, they're both getting after the quarterback. They're both tackling efficiently. And that's nothing we're talking about Patrick Queen, right? There used to be a time, right? I mentioned this before, where if Patrick Queen was one-on-one -on -one in open field with a running back, tight end, whoever it may be, he was going for the hit stick. He was going for the big hit, right? Kind of an undisciplined kind of play. Now, when you see Patrick Queen in the open field, he's wrapping up. He's holding on to that guy gets to the ground, right? Um, versus the Bengals, Joe Mixon in the open field brought him down. Multiple plays where he's flowing sideline to sideline. He's finally being able to use his speed for a weapon. Now, his speed is actually taking him to where he needs to be. Not only that, pass coverage, right? Um, last week versus Texas, beautiful playing pass coverage. This week, same thing. So now when there was a guy that used to be a liability, now there is no hole in his game. Sorry. So yeah, talking about Patrick Queen's laser focus out there and his ability to make tackles in the open field is something that's greatly stepped up and right now. So, um, with this guy, with this player, um, I, I was on the vehemently on the side of, hey, look, man, you can't pay two inside linebackers a lot of money. In today's NFL, you just can't do it. Now, will the Ravens still end up paying Patrick Queen? I don't know. You know what I mean? That's something for the offseason that we don't have to talk about right now. But if I had to think about it, it's definitely up for consideration at this point. You know what I mean? He's played that well. He's made the jumps as the player that the Ravens wanted to see that they've been waiting on. And he's made those kind of leaps and bounds. 
Um, does it make sense structure wise? Who knows? But if you have a guy who was elite at the position, it's at least worth considering. And Patrick Queen is a, is entering that elite level of linebacker play. Um, several times, the way the Ravens are using him, um, I thought that maybe he could only be used as a blitzer. You know, he has to go straight going after the quarterback. But now, like I said, with his game expanding, being able to drop into coverage, being able to match on tight ends, running backs, and be able to make solid plays in the open field, Patrick Queen fully, fully deserves all our attention. And if he continues this kind of play, the Ravens are going to have to make a big decision in the offseason. And if they do decide to pay Patrick Queen, a decision that I was probably against beforehand, I would 100% understand it at this point in time. Because just because of the way he's playing. And I don't see his play dipping off, dropping. He's been this guy now for almost a year straight, if we're being honest. So he's he's been this kind of player for almost a year straight. So I don't see a dip or a change in Patrick Queen's game. I think he is who he is now. And that's a borderline elite linebacker with a with the potential to get into that elite category. So let me know what you guys think about Patrick Queen. I thought that was important to highlight what he's been doing this year. Um, and yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. But I'm gonna get out of here. It's Gabriel, it's Fan TV. I'm out.